Uh, I must say, it's not every day you get a chance to meet a group of Olympians and, and Paralympians. And um, I'm delighted to say we've got some of uh, British Sailing's leading medal hopes here with us today to tell us about life on the campaign trail and update us on their preparations for an away games in an incredibly challenging location. So um, who do we have on stage at the moment? We've got a two-time Olympic medalist and double world champion windsurfer campaigning for his fifth Olympic in his fifth Olympic Games in Rio. That's Nick Dempsey. Um, steady. Uh, and then uh, we've got a London 2012 Olympic silver medalist in the men's 470 event. That's Luke Patience. And we've got three times world champions in the Paralympic Sona class, officially selected just last week for their fourth Paralympics at Rio this summer. That's John Robertson, Hannah Stodel, and Steve Thomas. Um, thanks very much for joining us. I know you've got a really uh, hectic schedule uh, at the show. Um, and uh, one of the things that strikes me is you're very much the sort of present uh, uh, of, of sailing um, at the moment, at the peak of sailing, but there's so many young people here and it strikes me we've got Olympic champions here, but we've got Olympic champions out there as well, potentially in, in the years to come. Um, what is it, do you think, that sort of defines your progress to becoming Olympians? Is there a particular word like perseverance or resilience or something that you look back and think, yeah, that's where, this is where it all started for me and this is what got me through? So anyone in particular? Luke? I, I, I remember doing a few talks to some schools after, after the games, and it's actually quite humbling to see that, you know, going back to primary schools that I hadn't been to since I was uh, the same height as I am now, incidentally, but, uh, you know, a 10-year-old. Um, I think belief is pro. I know that sounds a bit cliche, but, you know, to, to just, you, you, the individual is the only person that makes a choice whether they want to achieve something or not. So. I think that's the thing that overrides everything, that if any individual wants something bad enough, then somebody's got to win. I mean, somebody's got to win the gold medals, someone's got to win the 100 meters, someone's got to win the RSX windsurfing, and it's probably the person that wants it the most and goes, I believe I can be the person that does it, and, and just cracks on a little bit, a little bit, a little bit for, I mean, two decades in some of our cases. <laughs> <laughs> and um, was there a kind of initial moment when you took up the sport? Was there an initial, from when, when we spoke to the Olympians yesterday, uh, the sailors yesterday, um, two of the four said, yeah, the first time I went in a boat, I cried my eyes out. I hated it, I cried my eyes out, yeah. I, I can tell you who they are as well, if you like. But, um, <laughs> yeah, but Giles was one of them. He was like, oh no, I hated it. <laughs> but was there a particular moment when you first went in a boat and you just thought, yeah, or, or first went and thought, yeah, this is for me? Um, for myself, I started with seven when I was seven, um, so very small. And uh, I think from that moment, I, I, uh, I loved it as a sport. Um, there's something just about being on the water. Mm -hmm. um, I don't know what it is. You know, everybody feels that when they go sailing. It's a very free, open sport. And um, yeah, I don't know. It's something special about being on the water. And yourselves, was there kind of an epiphany when you first got in a boat? Yeah, well, my first sailing experience was on a mirror dinghy at South Shields on the River Tyne. It was probably about 35 knots. <laughs> Went out with my dad, first ever sail, capsized, swept out to Norway somewhere, <laughs> terrified, but actually it was pretty cool. The <laughs> water was freezing, but it was like something I enjoyed, even though in sort of masochistic way. And then just to keep going back and doing it and doing it and then get into the Paralympic sailing. You know, it's just that small thing of getting into it, seeing it as fun, even though it was terrifying-ish. You know, it's quite a, an interesting way to start, really. Yourself? I hated it, if I'm honest. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I said, a few of the guys said that yesterday. Yeah, yeah I yeah. was uh, the screaming it? child uh, <laughs> in Brightling Sea with my mother in a mirror. Didn't want to go. Hated it, hated it, hated it. And then, I don't know, I guess I suddenly realised it was actually all right. It wasn't as scary as it first thought. And then from there, the bug bit me. and been sailing ever since so I was quite lucky really turned it around quite quickly yeah yeah uh, I came from a bit of a different background uh, these guys come through the system um, I lost my legs uh, to meningitis uh, and then sort of asked to try out in the sailing team and uh, spent the first few months going what is going on here <laughs> and uh, but loved competing and uh, 
stayed in it to win a bronze medal at the, the Worlds and then it's just loved, loved every aspect from it from there on, really. Love it. So you came into it later in life, yeah, basically. Yeah, yeah, mid-20s, yeah. Yeah, so. yeah. Um, and uh, Luke and Nick, you had great medal success in London. Uh, London was such a seminal event, wasn't it, in terms of it was a home Olympic Games and all that. Do you have a particular standout memory of the Games? Uh, I think for me it was... Um, Definitely racing in front of the crowd on the meadow race course, on the node course. Um, that's pretty unique in sailing, and we'd never get a chance to do that. So um, for me to be able to do that in front of uh, a crowd is pretty special, but in front of a British crowd was yeah. Um, even better. Yeah. yeah. And could you, you could obviously hear the crowd, and you could feel you the could kind of input them, yeah. from the crowd. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, you could actually hear them. Yeah, fantastic. I sort of remember, I, I think the most vivid memory I have of the games is... It's actually nothing to do with sailing. We, our, my first race didn't start for six days after the opening ceremony. So we pleaded with the Olympic manager, Sparky, to release us and let us go up to London and go to the actual opening ceremony. Uh, and, and he did with a chaperone to make sure we were safe, whatever that is. <laughs> I mean, uh, and we, uh, I remember standing in the tunnel. We'd walk for about two hours from the Olympic Village to the Olympic Stadium up in London there and obviously Team GB were the last team to be called on you know they do alphabetical order and then they do the host nation so everyone had gone on and we we're stood in the tunnels of the of the stadium waiting uh, and you know 80,000 people just started stamping their feet on the floor and chanting Team GB and I remember just looking at Stuart who was the chap I sail with in London and just the look in his eyes I'm sure as was, mine was the same but just a pure elation and almost disbelief that after all these many years we'd finally got to the stage where it was our turn to try and race our best and we got called out into the and of course they played oh, um, it was unbelievable. they played heroes didn't they when, yeah, when yeah. you went out and again I mentioned to the team yesterday I was like I was at home watching it on my sofa I was blubbing <laughs> on my sofa so what it must have been like to be there you know must have been absolutely extraordinary surreal yeah so, totally surreal um and Nick, yeah, uh, Rio will be your fifth Olympic Games, uh, staggeringly. And a lot must have changed about Olympic sailing in that time. Um, so what are the biggest changes when you look back on your first Games in Sydney? A lot has, ch a lot has changed um, in Olympic sailing in 20 years, but also a lot has remained exactly the same. Um, the equipment for us has moved on. Um, in fact, the whole game has moved on. Everyone's kind of evolved. but. Uh, Deep down, everything is exactly the same. You know, we're still racing around, around uh, four boys, and uh, it's still the same things that um, differentiate the winners from the, the people that come in the middle of the fleet. And um, and, and what are the things that differentiate the winners? Do you think? Um, I don't know. It's <laughs> sometimes you meet someone and you know that they're they're a good sailor, and you know they're gonna. They're yeah. going to be a winner before you even yeah. see them sail. It's interesting. With all the stuff with the sports science and everything, the technology now, sometimes there is an indefinable quality, isn't there? That you're like, yeah, this, we've got a winner here. We've yeah. got someone, yeah, yeah. Luke, in terms of uh, team selections, is everything now locked down for the team ready to go to Rio? Uh, not everything's locked down. There's still, there's actually still a, a couple of teams, two or three teams that are yet to be selected, but we and the Royal We, you know, the British sailing team has been working in Rio ever since the moment it was selected for the Games. It's one of the great things about British sailing is we're so well supported that as soon as Rio was selected, our manager and a group of people instantly went to Rio on a plane, looking at the venue, trying to get used to it. So it's a massive, massive army that are working the whole time behind the scenes. We're just the folk that get in the boat and hope that all those pieces have come together. So whenever everyone talks about a team effort, yeah. it is a massive team effort. And you're just part of the team, aren't you? Really, yeah. of course. Yeah, the most visible part. Exactly, uh, yeah. yeah. We're the most visible part. I mean, there's so, Rio is such a unique venue um, in terms of its topography and the tidal flow and everything that goes on. So to try and get, to tr try and make Rio feel like home is a real challenge and something that will never be finished. We'll keep working on that till the last day of racing. Yeah. And... Um, Hannah, on that very note, I've been asked, my question here says, ask um, Hannah about tricky wins. 
Um, so I understand Rio is quite a challenging place to sail. Why, why is that? Yeah, I mean, like Luke said, the topography is crazy. Obviously, you've got Sugarloaf Mountain, and it is generally quite mountainous around there. So you've got all of that to figure out. There's also the tidal element, as he's already said, and it's just keeping on top of that. And we are very lucky within British Sailing that we do have an amazing amount of people working behind the scenes, figuring all of that out for us to help us on the way and help us when we're sailing. Because as well as the uh, tides and the conditions and the winds and all the other vagaries that you're going to have to know intimately to, to do well in Rio, you're also the, the, a rare sort of breed of athlete that's actually immersed in your medium. You've got water splashing on you all the time. And there's a, uh, been a fair amount of coverage in the press about the quality of that water and how potentially it might affect you going forward. So, uh, uh, Steve, is there anything you know, in particular, precautions that are being taken to stop that having an impact? Yeah, yeah, the um, support team, the medical team are doing a fantastic job of uh, putting some processes in place that just try and eliminate illness. So trying to look at cleanliness, um, antibacterial, hand wash, coke off the water, uh, drinking coke, which kills the bugs in the tummies, um, and basically washing your kit down every day. So just trying to prevent as much uh, as bugs getting into the system as possible. And uh, I think they're doing a really good job. I don't think there's been anyone not sale because of illness so yeah. yeah it seems to be working but obviously there's you can't be too uh, too careful with uh, the waters out in rio expedition medic uh, medic i worked with last year used to call coat the black doctor yeah yeah so, George, you want a bit of the black doctor and say you know to just to, to kill everything <laughs> nail everything it's good for uh, good for everything by the looks of it yeah mm -hmm. except your teeth yeah, yeah. Um, yeah. so uh, in terms of preparation uh, john what's a kind of typical day's training for you at this stage with five months to go a typical day or a typical week uh, we're actually sailing down in portland next week before we go out to rio so that's like a bit of a shock for us we've just been in miami for uh, two weeks and then st pete's for two weeks and then you go back to portland and it's like five degrees freezing 25 knots but it's a really good venue to train out of we've got the whole uh, sports science team all the docs and uh, head doctors and everything so we get looked at looked after and all of that as well uh, but a typical day for us would be next week monday and fitness testing uh, the guys are uh, rigging the boats up then we're going sailing in the afternoon then we've got a, a mdt which is a multidisciplinary team meeting so all the whole support staff we had to get together with those guys uh, see how we're progressing and then the rest of the week uh, we're sailing down in portland like i say gym in the morning sailing in the afternoon uh, for three or four days and then off to Rio next weekend. So yeah, pretty packed and it's just continual process of keep evolving really. And uh, there can be a perception that uh, being an Olympic athlete is just relentlessly open top bus parades through packed towns and uh, receptions at Downing Street and opening ceremonies and all that. Uh, but of course, there's a flip side to, to the whole Olympic campaign and the run up to Olympics. What would you say are the sacrifices What's the downside of the work you're having to do in the preparation for any Olympics? Clean clothes. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you spend so much time, I don't know about you guys, but so much no. time living out of a bag. <laughs> you just, you're wearing the same kit day in, day out. Yeah. And, you know, but is that, chance... I mean, taking you away from your families and yeah. things like that? Is that I a... miss my mum's laundry service, I must say. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Sacrifice is a funny one because it, we choose to do it, so it's not the time away and all that we're, we are chasing what we've wanted to chase for a long time and we're very fortunate the support we get so i'm sure everyone's different in the answer to that question but it's not a sacrifice it's ace <laughs> it's the, I, we have the best job it's not a job in the world and i suppose friends and family is a thing i imagine everyone would say they miss but yeah it's awesome <laughs> it's the coolest coolest thing it's really nice you're losing I don't know, I turned to you there. <laughs> <laughs> Nick Dempsey. But I just well, do you know, it's really nice for to, hear, to hear someone say that, actually, because um, you are kind of living the dream. There isn't anyone sitting here who wouldn't love to be where you are and doing what you do. And appreciate the huge sacrifices you've made to get there, but it's really nice to hear someone say that, actually, yeah, it is ace. It's absolutely there awesome. Are, I mean, Nick was saying this. earlier, actually, we're doing a, for some of the gold members of the RA, there, there are, you know, times when it's really hard and it's, and then Nick said that you hate it and things like that, which you do, and, but that's like anything in life, isn't it? You, nothing's, you know, nothing's perfect all the time, the ups and downs, and the downs always just mean that, that you can 
find yourself rising again. Yeah. And one thing's for certain, we're all stood here probably because the ups always outweigh the down moments. Yeah. So, I, th I think the thing as well, you know, for the rest of your life, you'll be Olympians and Paralympians. That's how to, you will be defined by by the experiences you're having now. So, yeah. Um, so, uh, Nick, can the British sailing team pull off another fantastic medal haul in Rio this summer? And who's going to be the major competition for those medals? Ooh, I mean, yes, we absolutely can. Um, we no longer have uh, Ben Ainsley, Ian Percy, Paul Goodison. Um, we have lost some of our, I suppose, some of our best sailors. But um, we have a new crop of sailors coming up. And we have people that are kind of filling their shoes. Mm. Uh, Giles will win. Put your money on Giles. Put your house on Giles. <laughs> he loves it when I say that. <laughs> he loves to put the pressure on Giles. Uh, um, just tweet that, mate. Hold the on. team. Uh, the team's in a really good place. We, uh, I think, have a uh, an opportunity to win a medal in every class that we're sending. Um, people are in our squad are winning world championships and constantly holding him. Uh, sailors, and um, I think we're in a good shape. Uh, Competition-wise, uh, it depends which class you're in. Obviously, the 49ers, the Kiwis, win a lot of things. Um, the uh, 470 men, Luke's got a bit on with the Australians. Um, so there are a few dominant sailors out there. But, um, you know, we're, we're doing everything we can, and uh, we're closing the gap on those people. And uh, we'll be in a good place. And you've got a tonight. tremendous reputation and aura kind of going into this game it's, you know you've got a real momentum behind you from london i think and uh, a reputation to uphold and in a way, that's a good thing isn't it it's good positive psychology in a way um and what about you john what's the, the main rivals in paralympic sailing do you think yeah there's uh, quite a few strong teams in our sonar class that we sail in uh, and we're a relatively light team lightweight not as in lightweight but you know we're uh, not heavy uh, for instance the Austral for instance the australian team both of their front guys, the crew, which is Steve and Hannah's position, they're like 95 and one guy is 120k. So they just literally lock in and just hike, but they can't really do much else. They're just big lumps and they just sit there. So we've got to try and find a way of, you know, getting around those guys. And the French are quick. Uh, the Yanks are quick at times, but, you know, they just explode generally in the head so <laughs> half the time. But, yeah, there's three or four teams which are really strong. So, like I say, French. Uh, Canadians are pretty good as well. So, yeah, there's a, a lot of teams that we've got to try and smash, really, yeah. And there was unfortunate news last year that sailing won't be part of the Paralympic program for the next Games in Tokyo. Uh, it's a huge shock, obviously, but at the same time, it's that added incentive for you to think, right, we've just got to nail it in Rio. Yeah, it's disappointing, isn't it, that sailing's been dropped from the program, but at the same time, it's sort of driven us on, you know, last yeah. chance and let's uh, show them what we're made of kind of thing. So it's definitely spurred us on, but obviously we still hope that the behind the scenes will get it reignited for 2024. Yeah, and I guess at the moment you can only focus one game ahead, can't you? You've got yeah. five months time. You've got a bit of work to do in five months time. And, <laughs> um, and finally, uh, you know, apart from winning gold, what, what's the thing you're looking forward to most about the Olympics in Rio? Just going to Rio, uh, Brazil, I don't know if anyone's been to Rio or Brazil or South America, just the people are so friendly and the city's just buzzing all the time. Uh, we train in Niteroi, which is a slightly quieter part of Rio, but still it's just got so much energy. The people are fantastic. You've got to like meat. There's not much fruit and veg. Well, there's a lot of fruit, but not so much veg. Uh, yeah, and it's just a fantastic place to go to, really. Fantastic. Uh, for me, it's about delivering our best performance at the Games and making sure we reach our potential. Um, and at the end of the day, we're to go in to, to win a medal and not for the T-shirt. So it's all about that end journey and, and delivering on what we set out to do. Yeah. And reflecting on your previous Olympic experiences, so you look forward at Rio now. Is there a particular characteristic of Rio that you're like, yeah, I'm really looking forward to that aspect of it? Or are you just totally focused on the competition? I think the racing is going to be fantastic. I think the racing is... Uh, it's the hardest venue we've, we've had, certainly at the games that I've been to. Um, if you, you know, if you looked at the the, uh, the tidal map again, and you actually we actually talked about that in detail, we could explain actually how tricky it is to sail there. You know, it is a venue surrounded by mountains. Mm. Um, the, the tide lines are very difficult to um, to work out, but we're getting our head around it. 
and um, it's just a hugely challenging venue. And I think uh, if uh, if the team can pull it together for that for that week, then um, I think that's going to be pretty satisfying. It's kind of the ultimate test, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Really, the ultimate yeah. test. It's an Olympics in a hugely demanding environment. Surely, the ultimate test of any sailor. So, Luke, yeah. any any thoughts? Oh, I mean, it's you know, it's the Olympic Games. It is the greatest show on earth. <laughs> I, I mean, Rio is known for its vibrant atmosphere and carnival and all these things they are going to put on such a good show one was good london but they are going to put on such a good show i think it's going to be colorful musical and i think it'll be uh, you know obviously we're there on business but the, the whole thing will just be massive it'll just involve everyone it'll go around the world i just can't wait for the the vibe nick's lucky enough to have experienced four of the things and I can't get enough of it after one, so <laughs> it's going to be cool. Really, really cool. Excellent. And Hannah, any thoughts? Yeah, like they've all said, I mean, the atmosphere is going to be brilliant, and yeah. actually the racing itself will be yeah. epic. It'll be challenging, it'll be difficult at times, but yeah. I think we pull it all together. And it's actually, almost, I suppose, a bit of a challenge is not getting too swept up in the atmosphere in the carnival. And as you say, you know, just as, as Fran Cotton said to the British Lions in 97, he went, this ain't no freaking holiday. You're not <laughs> here on holiday. You know, so it's almost not getting swept up in it, I guess, and staying focused on the job. Rio being Rio, you know, this great party town. So, um, well, um, chaps, thank you uh, so much. And I know everyone here uh, uh, sends their best wishes for, for this summer. Um, we'll be watching on the BBC. Uh, for those of you that want a taste of elite sailing up close, don't forget that the Sailing World Cup's coming to Weymouth and Portland this June, and your ticket to the uh, dinghy show will get you in free to the event on Saturday, the 11th of June, if you validate your ticket at the World Cup stand in the Panorama Hall. And uh, thanks so much uh, to the sailors for taking time out of their schedules to come and see us. Uh, they're around the show all day, so feel free to stop and chat and pick their brains ruthlessly uh, on how you might improve your own sailing. But uh, just to send them on their way uh, to Rio, so a big round of applause. So thanks, Seth. <laughs>